What's up guys, how you all doing? I'm Paul the Tech Giant and welcome back to another video where today at long last I'm going to be upgrading the storage on my PlayStation 5 because currently it's got less space than a one bedroom flat. Now the storage that I'm going to be fitting to the PS5 is this one terabyte Samsung 980 Pro that does not come with a heatsink, but I have purchased a heatsink, which I will be fitting to that solid state drive. So if I can do this, then anyone can. Now, if you're the sort of person who doesn't want to go messing around with heat sinks, then we do have this Western Digital Black, which does come with one pre-installed, which we will be fitting to my son's PS5 in an upcoming video. So make sure you subscribe for that. Now to fit the SSD, we're gonna need a few things. So we have got a flathead screwdriver, which we're gonna need to remove the stand. And I've got a couple of different size Phillips head screwdrivers to attach the SSD. Now, as you can see what I've done, I've laid out a towel so it's nice and soft for when we lie down the PlayStation so it doesn't get scratched. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you a proper safe way of how to remove this back cover plate. And I found out something that no one else seems to talk about when it comes to removing it. So first thing that we need to do, if you do have the stand fitted, is turn the PlayStation upside down. Easily stand like that. Flat-headed screwdriver, simply in the bottom of there. Unscrew that screw, and then that will simply come off like that. Now comes the part that everyone dreads, and that is removing the rear cover plate. Now, the process for this is to pull up on the top rear right-hand corner, and then pull the plate down. But I have seen so many videos where people have made a right pig's ear of it. They've snapped clips off, they've been tugging on it overly hard, and that just looks really, really awkward. But I've studied this cover plate, and uh, I think I have uh, found something no one else seems to talk about. So if we go in close and we pull back that top right hand corner, can you see we have got like a couple of plastic pins? Now, these plastic pins are holding that cover in place and stopping it from sliding down. So once you have pulled those out far enough there, the plate will slide down. So yeah, that should clear it up for a lot of people exactly what the process is doing when you are pulling up on that corner. So yeah, if I go in close there, you can see those pins just coming out of those holes. So the time has come for me to do this for the very first time. So uh, I'm pretty sure with what I've just shown you, I'm gonna uh, pull this off first time. So gonna lie it down, face down. I'm gonna lift up on that corner. Gonna uh, just do it as gentle as possible. So lift it up and pull in down. Look at that, no fuss, no tugging. How easy was that? Now, I am genuinely shocked just how easy that was to do. And uh, if you agree and think that is the easiest method that you've ever seen, then give me a thumbs up. It's gotta be worth it for that alone. Now, if we go in close to the cover plate, we can see that those plastic lugs just there will fit in to those two holes on the rear of the PlayStation, exactly what I thought. So yeah, that is where I think a lot of people are struggling. And then we do have those clips just there, again, that people seem to break off all the time and they fit into these various holes. But look, no scratches, no damage, no nothing. Next up, we have to remove the cover for the SSD bay. And for this, we're gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver just the one screw to remove. Hopefully it won't be too tight. Nope, very loose indeed. So uh, no real pressure required just there. There we go, the one screw removed and then just get your finger underneath there and pull it out. Right, let's next up, remove the SSD from the box and we're gonna offer it up. So uh, yep, there it is. Very nice indeed and very dinky. Now, as you can see, we do have like a notch cut out of one end of the SSD. And uh, this end is where a screw will attach to hold it down in place. Now, if we just look closely at the PlayStation, we can see just there that we do have the same notch. So what we're gonna do is just simply offer up this SSD 
So what I'm gonna do is put it in at angle. Now, a lot of people wanna put these in straight and push them in, but that is incorrect. So just line up that SSD at an angle, push it in just gently. You've not got to force it. It will sit up proud like that. That's perfectly fine. And then just push it down and that is how it will sit. Now, what we need to make a uh, note of is this hole here. So uh, as you may see just there, we do have a screw and a spacer. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna just simply remove the SSD for now. So again, just letting go, it will sit up like that. Just pull out at an angle, just ever so gently, it easily pops out. We're gonna grab our Phillips head screwdriver and remove that screw and spacer. And there we go. I'll just show you just there. So that little spacer will come out like that. And we are gonna pop that into, I think it was 80. So pop that into that hole for now. And we're gonna set the screw to one side. Next up, we're gonna fit the heat sink to the SSD. Now I've gone for this Acasa one. I think it was about 4 dollars I'll put a link to it in the description. And uh, one of the benefits of uh, buying them separately is uh, they can actually work out to be a little bit cheaper than buying them already fitted to the SSD. So as we can see, it's uh, quite a flat design. So please bear in mind that you don't wanna get anything that's too chunky, otherwise the uh, plate won't go back on. It's got a... Uh, strip on the back we're going to simply peel that off in a minute and it will stick down onto the ssd now what we need to be careful of is that when we stick it down that it doesn't go too far over one end or the other because if it goes over this end i turn it around that end because that's the way it's going in uh, we could block where the screw goes in and too much down this end we could block where those pins go in now, one way you could do this is to fit the SSD in, push it down and then fit that on top. But just to uh, show you guys a bit closer up, I'm gonna peel this off like that. And I've never done this before in my life. So just gonna make sure I line this up properly. That all looks good to me just there. I push that down. There we go, just straighten that up a little bit. There we go, simple as that. So next up, we just need to fit the SSD back in the bay. So once again, just gonna put it in gently at an angle, lightly push in. There we go, simple as that. You haven't got to put a great deal of pressure on it at all. Then uh, as we can see, that lines up perfectly with that hole with the spacer. We're gonna grab our screw that we removed from there earlier. I'm gonna put this screw into the hole. Get our Phillips head screw, or screwdriver should I say. Simply screw that down into place. There we go, not gonna over tighten it. Simple as that. Next we need to refit the cover for the SSD bay. So we've got this little sort of ridge on the end, going quite shallow. Push that into place in a little click. Grab the screw that we removed earlier. Let's push that in. Phillips screwdriver again, and then just simply screw it down, remembering not to over tighten it. Next, we need to refit the back plate. Now what I've done, I've gone ahead and quickly just whip the vacuum over the uh, internals there, just to remove a little bit of dust, which uh, to be honest, wasn't that bad, seeing I've had this uh, PlayStation since launch day. Now, um, I've never done this before. What we're gonna do is line up these pins on the back, which to be honest, I think they're gonna just pretty much line up themselves. So if you just gently just push up like that and just gonna use common sense. And I think I'm just gonna have to push that upwards. So just gently push. There we go. That seems to have clicked into place. Now, uh, Sony actually say that you should like, when you pull it, off and push it back on. You should do it at an angle. But as you've seen there, I've not done that. I've just pushed it straight up and down. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna remove it again. Just show you how easy it is. Pulling up, pulling gently down. There you go. And as we can see, the pins actually go straight up and down. So I don't know what Sony are on about there. Again, just push, pushing it back on, just letting it drop into place. It almost self-aligns, push it straight up. And there you go. 
Sometimes these things just need a bit of common sense. So final thing that we need to do before we turn it all back on is to put on the stand. So just flipping it over once again, popping the stand on like so, dropping the screw into place and using the flat headed screwdriver. Once again, not too tight. And there we have it. Right, so we've got the PlayStation all plugged back in then, and let's uh, fire up and see what happens. Okie dokie, so now we have this page that is displayed saying to use your M.2 SSD, you need to format it. When you format your M.2 SSD, all data on it will be deleted. That's fine because we've got nothing on there anyway. If you want to continue using your PS5 without formatting your M.2 SSD, turn off your PS5 and then remove your M.2 SSD, which we don't need to do. Note that saved data, screenshots and video clips can't be saved in M.2 SSD storage. So we've got the options there of do not format and turn off PS5 or format M.2 SSD. So that's what we're gonna select. And as we can see that it's formatting now, doing it very quickly. So there we go, it says the read speed of your M.2 SSD is as follows. And there we go, we have our read speed. So I'm gonna press okay and continue. Now it says your M.2 SSD has been formatted. To change where your games are installed, go to settings, storage, installation location, to safely remove your M.2 SSD, turn off your PS5 first. So there we go, we are back to the home menu and all looks perfectly normal to me. So let's head on over to the settings, make sure everything has worked as we want it to. So go into storage. And as we can see, we've got the console storage there, but now we have the additional M.2 SSD storage. So if we click on that, we can see it says at the top, Samsung SSD 980 Pro 1 terabyte. And there we see it says free space 1 terabyte. So that is a successful install. Well, there you have it then, guys. Now, I would say that was far simpler than I thought it would be. And uh, I'm sure you agree. If you follow those simple steps that I showed you, especially when it comes to lifting off that cover and the way you insert the SSD, I don't think you can go far wrong. I mean, like I said earlier, if I can do it, then anybody can do it. Now, do us a favor and seeing that I've taken the time to help you guys out, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button if you have appreciated this video. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel then please consider doing that as well so thanks very much for joining me today and hopefully catch you guys on the next one bye for now